It's time for a wellness revolution. Brought to you by Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. Honest discussion on maintaining health and wellness naturally to enjoy a better quality of life. He's the doctor fighting to let you keep your doctor. Now, Dr. Stephen Hotsi. Dr. Hotsi's Wellness Revolution podcast is brought to you by Physicians Preference Pharmacy, formerly Hotsi Pharmacy. Welcome to Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution. I'm Stacey Banfield here with Dr. Stephen Hotsey, founder of the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. And one of my favorite topics, keto. It's a hot topic. Everybody's talking about it, still talking about it. I know when I was first introduced to keto, I couldn't get enough of reading about it and learning more about it. So I'm very excited uh, to have Dr. Hotsey explain more about keto, especially how it pertains to losing weight. Dr. Hotze. Thanks so much, Stacy, and thank you for joining us here on Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution. I believe that you and everybody needs a doctor and a staff of professionals who have the wherewithal, the know-how, the ability to coach you on a path to health and wellness naturally. So as you mature, you've got energy, vitality, and enthusiasm for life without using pharmaceutical drugs. The real basis of good health is a proper healthy eating program. I don't believe in diets. I believe in eating healthy. I believe you ought to eat to live rather than live to eat. We're going to talk today about how you can lose weight by eating fat. Now, that seems kind <laughs> it of... Doesn't right. sound, it doesn't sound right. When I'm I first heard it, Eat that fat and lose weight, okay? Mm-hmm. Let me explain the history. You have, you've grown up over the last 40, 50, 60 years hearing that don't eat all that fat. It's bad for you to give you heart disease. Cholesterol will give you heart disease. It's bad for you. And this all started back in the 1950s when a scientist by the name of Ansel Keys came up with this theory that he postulated that the cause of heart disease was elevated cholesterol in the blood. And he he had some studies done worldwide where he studied different countries and the existence of heart disease to the amount of fat they ate. And there were 23 c- countries that he studied, but he selected only seven countries that met his criteria because some of the countries, people ate high-fat diets and didn't have heart disease. And America was one of the countries. And back in the 1950s, uh, President Eisenhower heart, had a heart attack, and it really brought to the forefront this whole concept of how do we keep from having heart attacks, which were rise, had been rising over the last 20 to 30 years. And Ansel Keys and a group of physicians came up with the theory that if we cut down on fat intake, then we'll cut down on heart disease. Now, there were a number of scientists and doctors who said, no, that's not right. It's not fats in the diet that are killing people. It's sugar in the diet. Dr. Yudkin out of uh, out of England, a scientist, was very, very uh, instrumental in promoting the idea of the dangers of sugar. But overall, the the uh, agricultural department and the agricultural business groups moved into this. They wanted to sell more grain products. So a dietary pyramid was created by the United States Department of Health the U- and the USDA, and by even Congress, Senate got involved with this, and the American Heart Association and Diabetic Association. And it was a food pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid were grain products, lots of grains. And then simple carbohydrates on top of that, potatoes, rice, and corn. And then green vegetables, and then meats, and just a little bit of fat. They wanted you to eat no fat, although they wanted you to use margarine, which is a trans fatty acid, which we know now uh, causes uh, is atherogenic which causes atherogenesis and inflammation in the coronary arteries. And it's dangerous for you. You should not be eating any margarine or anything with trans fatty acid. Well, so society adopted this low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, food pyramid. And what happened in the 60s all the way up to our current state right now in the the, approaching uh, 2020, is that there was a dramatic increase in weight by Americans. In 1960, only 16% of the population was overweight. 
half of those, that's 8% of the population, were obese. Currently, in American society, 70% of Americans are overweight, 35% are obese. Diabetes has dramatically increased. We see it now. It used to be called adult onset diabetes mellitus. Now it's called type 2 because children are overweight and getting diabetes. So what happens when you eat a diet that is high in your grain products and your products that get can, uh, your other starches like corn, potatoes, and rice, all those are starches. Starches are simply sugar molecules that are hooked together. As soon as you put those in your mouth, that's the grain products, pizza, pasta, cookie, cakes, bread, all that, uh, potatoes, rice, and corn, you put that in your mouth, it immediately begins to be dissolved by amylase uh, enzymes in your mouth and turns into sugar and all the way down to your digestive system. It, it, the starches, which are sugar molecules, are released and your sugar levels go up. Well, that causes your pancreas to release insulin because the body doesn't want high sugar levels. High sugar levels in the blood, the sugar will bind to proteins in the body, and this is called glycolated protein end products. And these are very, very damaging to the inner lining of your arterial walls and to enzymes within all your cells in your body. And once the Once the sugar binds to it, it doesn't get removed, and it causes significant health problems when you have high sugar levels. So the body doesn't like high sugar levels, so it increases insulin, and insulin takes that sugar, and it converts it to guess what? Mm -hmm. Fat. Fat. It converts it to fat. And guess what? Because we're very toxic in in our environment, we're exposed to a lot of petrochemicals in the foods that we eat and what we breathe, drink, drink. and and slather on our body, those petrochemicals are toxins, and the body stores toxins in fat. So the fat is a place where the body stores all these toxins. And insulin levels, as they go up, the cells become more resistant to the insulin. They've got enough sugar inside the cells, and the body uses sugar as one of the energy-producing molecules in the body. Sugar is is burns in the body, and burns in the cells and helps produce energy. Unfortunately, it's very quick energy. It burns quickly, and it always runs out. So you constantly, when you're on a uh, on a eating program that's high in carbohydrates with grain products, potatoes, rice, and corn, guess what? Your sugar level is going to go up, and they're going to go down, up and down. So you're constantly hungry or hangry. <laughs> so in those in in insulin at high levels is highly inflammatory, as is sugar. These are inflammation, and that's what causes disease in our bodies. In the coronary arteries, it settles this inflammation, although it occurs throughout the entire body when you have high sugar levels and when you have high insulin levels, and it affects the brain function. It affects the circulation of the heart. It affects the kidneys, the small arterioles in your distal extremities, in your feet and the hands. These are all... uh, adversely affected so we have decreased circulation and we do and the organs don't work or function as well so and that leads to high blood pressure so now you have you're overweight or obese now you have high blood pressure you have coronary artery disease you've got early developing alzheimer's disease you've got kidney problems you've got poor circulation you've gained weight you get degenerative arthritis and this also high levels of insulin and inflammation leads to cancer. Cancer grows on sugar. You got high sugar in your body, you're going to feed any cancer cells you have in your body. Well, and it still amazes me, Dr. Hodesy, that people will go to conventional doctors, they, they, they find out they have cancer, and the doctors do not, so many of them don't encourage them to get off sugar. Right. They don't even mention that. They don't even tell them that cancer feeds on sugar. Because they believe in their drugs, which are chemotherapy drugs, are going to cure them. Well, they know they're not going to cure them, but they they think they don't need to worry about. It. They really do very little on, on uh, healthy eating. So the ketogenic eating program is just the opposite of the uh, current food pyramid. And by the way, think about this: if I eat a high simple carbohydrate diet that's high in grain products, that's wheat, barley, rye, all those things you make bread, pizza, p- cookies, pasta, cakes, and all that out of, and potatoes, rice, and corn. If I have that high in my diet. I've got all this inflammation going on. 
I've got these diseases of aging that are developing in my body. Guess what? I'm sick. Mm-hmm. And this is what the heart society is telling me, telling you to eat. And this is what the diabetic society is telling you to eat. And this is what the government's telling you to eat. This is what the pharmaceutical companies are telling you to eat. A high carbohydrate diet, a high grain diet. Well, you're sure to continue to have your health problems. And guess what? When you have health problems, you go to your conventional doctor. And what do they prescribe? Pharmaceutical drugs to mask your problems. Or you get heart disease and you go to your cardiologist and they do surgery on you. Put a splint in or do bypass surgery. You become a cash cow for the medical industrial complex when you eat unhealthy. And when you eat the diet, they encourage you to eat. I frankly think, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty cynical about this. I think they know what they're doing. And this is the way they keep the American public sick so they can generate huge amount of money off your being sick. Now, I know that sounds cynical, but ma'am, sir, that's just the way the drug companies operate and conventional medicine operates. And the doctors become the drug dealers for the drug companies. And they're complicit in all this. So what's the solution to this high-grain diet? Let's turn it over. Let's eat a ketogenic eating program. Ketogenic comes from the word ketones. Ketones are breakdown products of fat. And they are also burned by your power plants within your cell. You have power plants within every cell of your body called mitochondria. And those mitochondria produce electrical energy when they are catalyzed. They're power plants. And electrical energy drives all the biochemical reactions in our entire body. We know this. Think about it. When you go in for an EKG, doctors can do an EKG and you check your heart. They're they're measuring electrical current within your heart. Your body is a bundle of electricity. You want to make sure that you're producing high levels of electricity in your body so your body can function at a high rate. You know, you're hitting on all eight cylinders. You don't want to be a low voltage individual and a slug. But that's what happens when you become toxic and when you have uh, high levels of inflammation in your body. So what you want to do is you want to turn the pyramid upside down and you want to eat good, healthy oils and good, healthy fats, eggs, butter, bacon. You want to eat avocados, hard cheeses, good, healthy nuts. You can have olive oil, fish oil, coconut oil. Make this 50, 60% of your eating program. And then have green vegetables. You can have kale, spinach, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, asparagus. And pour some natural butter on it, you know, the clarified butter, uh, drawn butter, we call it, and put that on there and then spice it up and then get a little bit of meat. You don't need a lot of meat. If you're not eating a high carbohydrate diet, your body's going to want to make sugar in the body. And that's called, that's called gluconeogenesis. When the, when the body takes and tears down amino acids from protein and converts them to sugar molecules. So you don't want to eat a lot of meat. Four ounces is plenty uh, for a person to eat. It's the way meat goes. If you eat more than that and you eat eight or ten ounces, your body, your liver particularly, is going to take that protein and convert it to sugar. And you want to get down so you're not burning sugar. You're burning ketones. Now, when you eat a ketogenic uh, eating program like this, what you're going to find is that your hunger literally goes away. You're just not hungry. And you don't have to eat as often. In fact, you can go for 24 hours. You just don't eat for 24 hours. Let me tell you what I do every morning. I get myself a cup of coffee at home. Jenny brews wonderful coffee. And let me tell you how she makes it. She, we have some delicious coffee we get from Thrasher Coffee. And we even carry it here at our office. Uh, ground coffee puts it in. She puts some s- cinnamon in it. She puts a little bit of salt in it. And then she puts in the... In the pot, she puts in a couple of tablespoons of vanilla, and she runs that. And that is just delicious coffee. Now, I add to that coffee, I can add one of three things. I can add a tablespoon of butter, or I can add a tablespoon of coconut oil, or I may pour in whole whipping cream in there. So I put fat in that coffee. I'm using right now coconut oil, a tablespoon of coconut oil. I drink two cups every morning. I am not hungry all day long. Because my body is now in keto, is eating ketogenically and also take a tablespoon of our ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which we carry at the Hotel Health and Wellness Center, pure ketones, and it's sweet. It's got a little stevia in it. Mix a tablespoon of that in a glass of water, and I take my, my morning vitamins with that. 
and that's it. And I and I'm eating ketogenically. And then when I get to dinner at night, I'll have a nice salad. I used, I'm such a creature of habit. It's chopped broccoli, chopped spinach, chopped pecans. I put a few raspberries on it. I have raspberries muddled in olive oil, and then I'll have olive oil and I'll have uh, Modena uh, balsamic vinegar. I'll put that on that salad. That's my salad. And then I'll have some steamed steamed vegetables where I put a little butter on it and maybe a little piece of meat, you know, maybe one little quail or maybe I'll have four ounces of a steak. And that's it. That's all I have. Or maybe I'll just have shrimp. And that's what I eat. And I can't hardly eat a whole plate of that. Now, I, I am 69 years old on July the 5th. So by the time you see this podcast, I will have already had my birthday. <laughs> that's right. Two days from now. <laughs> So I'll be 69. I weigh in at 180 pounds. I feel like a million dollars. I've got all kinds of energy. I don't have a weight problem. And I'm not hungry. And I'm healthy. My blood pressure is fine. I've got no calcification of my arteries, which anybody in my age group, about 92 to 95% of all men my age are going to have calcification in their arteries, coronary arteries. But I've been taking vitamin C, high doses of vitamin C, 10,000 milligrams for about 25 years, and that cuts down on inflammation in the body. So that's the ketogenic eating program, and I highly recommend you eat that because you're going to lose weight on that program. And if you have high blood pressure and you're pre-diabetic, all these put you in an increased risk of getting heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, strokes, degenerative arthritis, kidney problems, Mm -hmm. um, circulatory problems as you age. Remember, it takes about 25 to 30 years to cook a good heart attack. And some of you right now are already cooking a heart attack. Many of you are cooking a heart attack. We know that because we can check your heart scan and see if you have calcification of your arteries. If you do, you got heart disease. And it's just a matter of when it's going to finally block off an artery enough that you're going to end up having a heart attack. So what you want to do now is take charge of your health. Do a 180. I've said this so many times. Most of you, most Americans are driving down the health freeway on the wrong side of the road and they're going to come do an overpass there's going to be an 18 wheeler and whack it's all going to be over you're going to be terribly crippled that's when you get a heart attack or cancer or you have a stroke and now you're going to go well i've got to go i've got to start eating healthy i got to start taking my vitamins and minerals i got to do no no you start that so you don't have that if you're cooking a heart attack stop it coronary artery disease grows once it starts 20 to 30 percent every year so it quickly will clog up all your arteries. And so the way you stop that is you eliminate your simple carbohydrates, your grains, uh, your wheat products, your potatoes, rice, and your uh, corn products, all of which are converted to sugar. And that sugar is pro-inflammatory in and of itself and also of the high levels of insulin that occur. And you want to stop that so you're healthy and well as you age. And you've got energy and vitality and you're full of enthusiasm. That's the ketogenic eating program, and it's easy. Now, let me just tell you, once you start on this program, for about a week, you can feel pretty rotten. Some people say it's called keto flu. What it really is is withdrawal off the sugar that your body is used to burning, the glucose. By the way, don't take high fructose corn syrup. The, the sucrose that you have, in uh, the sucrose that, that you have, table sugar, is part of glucose and it's part high fructose corn syrup high fructose corn syrup is really dangerous for you it's bad it's worse even than plain table sugar so you don't want to have that and it's all the soft drinks so you cut out your soft drinks you don't drink those why don't you drink water or iced tea and use stevia in it it's a great sweetener it's natural we carry it here at hotsey vitamins you can get truvia and other stevia products probably at grocery stores look around that's what i highly recommend that you use rather than using sugar and you'll be just as satisfied with that so that's my recommendation for you to get healthy the first thing you do is take charge of your eating program and eat a ketogenic eating program and that's the good news that you can do it and you can make that change and so for some of the products that dr hoodsey was talking about the stevia the coconut oil the ketones, the Thrasher's coffee that you were talking about. We all carry that at Hotze Vitamins. You can go to HotzeVitamins.com. That's H-O-T-Z-E, Vitamins.com. And also, if you want to just find out more about getting a heart scan, like Dr. Hotze talked about, uh, or getting your hormones balanced, you can call us at 281-698-8698. 
And that's 281-698-8698. Thank you for joining us today here at Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution. A special thanks to Physicians Preference Pharmacy, formerly Hotze Pharmacy, proud sponsor of Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution podcast. Information provided on this radio program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution radio program advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this radio program is at the listener's discretion.